Hey, another day at the shop. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, one of the things I've been uh, talking about uh, with some people was some of the different photography work and just basically running a camera uh, in a shop, it's really quite cool and I enjoy it. So uh, there was a discussion about moving a camera, panning, moving around, that kind of thing. And I got into it and I thought, you know what, there's no reason why we can't just do the whole shop 360 degrees and just sort of, you know, walk the whole place. What we want to do this week, this is episode 20, is the red box. The famous mystery red box that uh, a lot of people have asked me questions about it. So let's get into the, the red box and just have a look and just see exactly what we're going to be doing this week with the red box. This is the famous red box here. Yeah, and it's, yeah, alrighty. Yeah, there we go. Uh, if you've been seeing these at all, uh, they're starting to get more and more available. Uh, one of the things that I really did on this one, which was really cool, was one of the first things you want to do is take a look at these. Therefore, if you have a rusty bolt or something and you want to clean it off, this is, this is probably about the best way to go. I have spent hours with a wire brush and it'll, you know, on a bolt or a car part or something, and there's just no way, I can't even compete with these boxes. Now, you put your hands in here, obviously, and uh, if you want to scare the neighbors, and they take a look at this thing and say, what, what do you got here? Well, uh, what you can do is you can tell them that this is, you know, you got the close here. What you can do is you can tell them that this is for handling uh, environmental systems or something. Just sort of scare the whole neighborhood a little bit. And so we got two hot, two hands that we use. And so what I'll do is I'll sort of bring this over to you a little bit like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, we'll, uh, there's our hands. One hand kind of holds the part generally. Another one holds uh, a spray gun, which I've got right here. Now the gun is built into the device, so it's kind of a little hard to pick that up, but there, there you can see it. And it sprays a medium, or a sand, or a blast type medium that cleans and rusty, you know, cleans rusty parts. So what happens, and I've got this really nasty looking black powder stuff. I made a big mistake uh, about this. I bought what they call medium. And medium is probably okay for cleaning a really bad rusty part, but for the kind of finish that I like to have, usually when I'm spraying with something like this, uh, a fine or even a very fine medium would have been a lot better. Very inexpensive to buy too. Uh, this was about seven and a half dollars for a whole bag full. And one bag full pretty much does the, does the trick. That's, that basically fills the machine up and it allows to recycle and recycle this medium over and over again. So we'll just look at some of the parts. There's a low voltage light system back here that's kind of like a, it helps you to see. Now, I've got the screens off right now, but uh, one of the things you want to do is have like double-sided tape with a, a screen like this. And what you do is you actually put that in place here. And this is actually a sacrificial uh, window. And when this gets really bad, you take it off and of course you put another new one up. And uh, in fact, I need to do that right now apparently. This, the, this one has fallen off for some reason. Some double-sided tape would be another way to uh, re-stick the window on because the old one's actually still in pretty good shape and I've had it a long time. Now these gloves are a real heavy rubber and they're pretty cool but you don't want to spray into the glove if you can help it because let's face it, once this fails you're going to end up having to go through the issue of replacing these gloves and that, that can get a little bit pricey I guess. The other thing I did do with this machine is I went to a local uh, hardware store and I bought some window seal and I redid the seal. I wasn't real happy with the factory one because what I found was when you close the system up like this and you lock it down, such as I'm doing right there, and you're spraying, you've got 100 pounds of air pressure or 90 pounds, whatever you're using. You're blowing it into this and you have filters, so, but you still have pressure and you end up with a little bit of sand leakage you know, that's coming out from all over the place. So I found this was safer and better for health reasons 
to use it outside. So hence, that's the reason why it's on wheels. So I can wheel it in and wheel it out when I want to use it. Uh, the other thing that uh, these units have is there's your light switch there. Like I said, it's a low voltage kit, so you can turn this on and off for the uh, lamp that's inside the box. And for whatever reason, uh, huh, the uh, cord is actually missing off of this right now. That's a little strange. Uh, back here, there's a venting system back here on the back of the box. And let's see if we can get that in. Yeah, get it in perspective. This is a hole, but there's a vent down below. And what that does, it helps to relieve the pressure that's coming up through. On the inside is a filter. Uh, that filter is going to fill up all the time. And rather than replacing it all the time, take the filter off, clean it outside someplace, shake it good, you know, blow it off kind of thing. And then put it back on because otherwise you'll be blowing a lot of money buying filters if you change it every time. Every time you use this, you're probably going to choke that filter up at some point. There's two systems on here. Uh, the other one here is this big heavy filter. And this one's kind of like a, a car filter would be like on a carburetor or something. That's a really large cartridge type filter. And it's the same thing though. It blocks up really quickly and you end up having to sort of clean the filter constantly with it before you can use the device. Now remember, you're right here at the base, you're pumping 90 pounds of pressure in here. So that's quite a bit. Let's take a look on the inside and uh, we'll sort of have a look in here and uh, that way we can sort of get a good good visual of what the inside of this box actually looks like. And you can see there's your work, sort of like a workbench or your grid area. And there's your grain that you're going to be using to uh, spray with. Like I said, this is too heavy. This is a medium grit, which I thought would be, or medium, uh, uh, medium, uh, anyway, this is, okay, that didn't work out too good. All right, somewhere there we have to cut it out. Okay, looking inside, we see the, uh, the medium that I'm spraying with. Now, like I said, this is a, uh, uh, what they consider to be a medium gravel or great medium sand that I'm blasting with. There's the gun again. And you see it's attached inside the machine, and it recycles this over and over again. And, of course, there's your, there's your in interior lamp. And uh, so basically, it's a, it's a, they're a pretty neat tool if you have to use them. Uh, of course, they're not really a woodworking tool, are they? No. But they are still a really neat tool to have if you do any kind of car or auto type stuff like I do. They're really good for that. And normally, what I do is I usually just keep my, my spare stuff here. I also have spare uh, nozzles. One of the things you're going to have to change is this will wear down over time. You'll have to replace it. And that's part of your spray head, which of course you meet, your air comes up through here. Uh, and also what, what happens is it eventually wears this piece down, so you end up having to replace it. And so you get spare ones when you, when you usually buy one is you get two or three. And they seem to last a long time, but again, it depends on what you're spraying. Certain types of grit can probably run these things down a lot faster. This is an Atlas machine. I've seen some new, more inexpensive ones showing up at like tractor supply, that kind of thing. And like I said, the other, uh, the other thing you want to watch is... Uh, if you want to use this inside the garage, I don't recommend it. I recommend put it on wheels so you can wheel it outside and use it out there. It's just safer. I even wear a dust mask with this guy because I'm just that uh, concerned about you know the, the, the junk that I might be breathing or something. So one of the things I want to do is uh, just I usually just use like a, a heavy dust mask, but and then of course when you're not using it, you can store fairly easily just sort of you know run it away. The other problem with this, you need that. You need this big fatty some sort of air compressor because it takes a lot of air pressure. I'll be honest with you, the only thing I drawback I've had over the years with this is at about 90 pounds it seems to work great. When you get below 90 it's not that great. And if you get down to around say 60 pounds or so, it doesn't seem to work worth a, a ding. So uh, hey that was it this week, episode 20 from Coffee and Tools. want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, hopefully, maybe we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. And next week, we'll, yes, we will have another tool. <laughs>